So when we are training our memory and our imagination, we are helping ourselves see clear as well. Take a snapshot, and close the eyes again, and remember what you saw with as much detail as possible, so you can imagine that your eyelids are like the wings of a butterfly. Every time that you feel these sensations in your hands, tingling, warmth, uh, ants, like a pool of energy or a spiral, every time you feel any of these sensations, for me, you have activated your energy in your hands and you are aware of it. So then, how does Dr. Bates' theory explain the refractive errors? Well, when a person's oblique muscles are constantly over-tensioned, the oblique muscles deform the eye and keep it permanently in a too elongated shape. This would cause a myopic or nearsighted eye. It can focus close, but it cannot focus far away. And you need to know that even a millimeter difference in the length of the eye can already produce four diopters of refractive error. So if there is a little tension and the eye is deformed even by one millimeter, we would already have several diopters of a problem, yes? And if the person has tension in the straight muscles, the eye is too flat and that causes hyperopia. The person can focus at the far, but cannot really focus anymore up near. According to Dr. Bates' theory, if refractive errors and deformation of the shape of the eye, either too long or too flat, is due to muscular tensions in the muscles surrounding the eye, then what will be the solution? The solution is the relaxation and mobilization of these muscles, so that the eye can return to its normal shape and also so that it can take the shape it needs depending on where it has to focus. Simple, right? To accommodate distance, it can be flattened a little and the lens can be made flat. And if you need to see up close, let it get out a little long and let the lens bulge out. Thus, combining the theories of Hermann Helmholtz and William Bates, we have a much more complete understanding of how focusing works in the eye. If we just stick to the older theory, Helmholtz's only solution to vision problems would be to wear glasses. But if we also incorporate the more modern theory of Dr. Bates, which completes the previous one, then we have another alternative. We can do the work of relaxation and mobilization, teaching the eye to be able to focus again clearly. That is, we can exercise to train our eyes to focus better. A third option, in fact, is eye surgery to change the shape of the cornea in order to change the refraction. Although in addition to the pain, risks and cost inherent to the operations, the eyes remain under tension with the problems that this can cause later on. So basically there are three options. Of course you can choose the one that is right for you. If you are interested in exploring how to improve your sight and vision through some simple and easy exercises that are non-invasive, risk-free, easy, inexpensive and even fun, you can try the practices of natural vision. Using just relaxation and movement exercises for your eyes, you can train your eyes to look well and refocus clearly without glasses and without operations. So let's start practicing right now. To relax your eyes and improve your vision, I will explain the first technique called palming. The first great principle of natural vision is relaxation. If you want to be able to focus with your eyes normally again, it is essential to relax the eye muscles. And the best technique for relaxing the eyes is palming. It is a fundamental technique of natural vision that was invented by Dr. Bates himself. It is a very simple technique and I suggest you do it every day for the duration of this training for at least five minutes in each session. Do it for as long as you like, the more the better. One minute even makes a difference and ideally you should do it at least five to ten minutes every day. I promise you will notice a difference right away. So how do you do this simple but powerful technique? I show you right now. First, you need to relax your hands. If your hands are tense, the tension will pass to your eyes. So relax your hands and spoon them out like this. Because if your hands are flat, you're going to put pressure on your eyes too. And our goal here is maximum relaxation. 
Then you put your hands relaxed in the shape of a spoon and cross your fingers like this. They can be in front of each other, it doesn't matter. But cross them flat, not like this, not interlocked. You cross your fingers like this and keep watching me. Don't do it yet, because if you do it now, you won't see. Then you are going to rest your fingers crossed over what would be your third eye on your forehead. And with the palms of your hands, cover the eye sockets so that no light, or as little light as possible, passes through. And then close your eyes. The palming technique is done with your eyes closed and relaxed. It is very important that you do not cover your nose, because if you cover your nose, it's difficult to breathe and you won't be able to relax. Ok, so then you put your hands like this and stay that way for a minimum of a minute or as long as it's comfortable for you. There are people who do this exercise for half an hour or an hour. It's good that you start progressively, beginning with as much time as you find pleasant. You can time it and then add several minutes each time you practice. Ideally, try to do it for 5 to 10 minutes. If you can, try to do this at least three times a day, if possible. If you're only able to do it once, or even if you do it multiple times, include this practice before you go to sleep, because it relaxes your eyes before you fall asleep, because the eyes don't relax at night. If you intentionally relax them, then, while you sleep, for the rest of the night, all the relaxation of sleeping will benefit your eyes a lot too. Another very important recommendation is that if you are palming like this, there will come a time when your arms get tired and that will generate tension in your shoulders and neck. And if tension is generated in the shoulders and neck, that tension also affects the eyes, because the muscle chains are connected by the connective tissues. So one thing you can do is to practice palming in front of a table. You can put a cushion on it if you like, and in any case, you can put your elbows on the table. You put your hands in a relaxed spoon shape and create a base to hold your head, so that you can rest your head in your hands. And this adds relaxation. Another possibility, if you don't have a table, or if you prefer, is to use your knees. You unbutton your pants, put your elbows on your knees and take the same position. The breathing and the relaxation will be more profound, helping the process even more. As I was saying, it is convenient that you practice palming every day, preferably at least three times a day, as long as you find it comfortable, preferably five to ten minutes each time. But even if you can't get to the ten minutes, do it anyway, because even a minute will make a difference. So now, pause the video and practice palming. As you do this, observe and feel the relaxation in your eye muscles and the feeling of your eyes and your head. And notice how you begin to feel better overall. And you may even begin to notice that you start to see colors better or that you see more clearly after palming. Before we do this uh, technique, I would like to ask you to look around you and to see how you see. Um, I'm going to ask you to pay attention at different um, elements of your um, experience of seeing, different dimensions of the experience of seeing. How well do you see light? How do you see colors? How bright? How intense? How do you see um, depth perception? So how do you see the empty space or the 3D of things, the, three, the three dimensionality of things? Um, how do you see contrast? Mm -hmm. If there's things moving around you, um, well, how well do you perceive movement? Or how wide is your visual field? Just pay attention at, um, at all these aspects as you're looking around so that you can compare before and after the palming technique what happens. Yeah? And if you have um, an eye chart or small print around you, you could also have a look how well you see letters of a different, a certain size at a certain distance quickly. Uh, we're not going to do a very thorough uh, evaluation, but so that you have an impression, a first sense of what palming can do for you. Yeah, we're going to compare the before and after. 
So, you've had a look around you, I hope. I see. Very good, Dave. I encourage you to yawn. Yawning is very, very good <laughs> to have your eyes uh, moist and to relax and to have more oxygen uh, coming to your brain. So that's very, very good. Very good. Ellen, also, congratulations. And the yawning is also contagious. So when somebody yawns, it encourages everybody else to do so. It's a very good thing. Oh, if you were looking around you with your glasses on, then I'm going to ask you to repeat the exercise without the glasses. Uh -huh. Because I, I see you, Gundo, <laughs> that you had the glasses on. So have a look without glasses, how you see. It doesn't matter if you see blurry at this moment. It's just to have an impression of the before-after effect of palming. So again, see how well you see light, colors, contrast. Mm -hmm depth perception, uh, the width of your um, visual field. And now we're going to do a bit of palming and we'll compare. So, some people like uh, to rub their hands to uh, make them be warmer, and that's helpful. And some people like to shake their hands so that the, if there's any tension in the muscle in the hand, they're, they're released. Mm -hmm. Some people like to activate the energy in their hands when they are knowledgeable in uh, energy techniques. Well, in any case, the idea is that your hands are relaxed so that that's what they're going to convey to the eyes. So you're going to put your hands in the shape of a spoon now. Yeah, not flat, because if they're flat, they could convey some tension or some pressure to the eyes. So you're going to put them in a spoon-like position you're going to cross your fingers, doesn't matter uh, which hand goes in the front and which in the back. And you'll put your fingers on your forehead so that your hands, your, the palms of your hands, are covering your eyes. And you will close your eyes. If you have contact lenses, you want to remove the contact lenses before. And of course, you don't wear any glasses when you're doing the palming. Uh, you already remove them uh, to do this quick evaluation. Um, if you can, it's more restful if you can put your elbows on a table or on your knees or on some cushion so that you're not holding your arms and they wait and they create tensions on your shoulders. Yeah, And so, um, an important detail also, as you have your hands over your closed eyelids, your palms over your closed eyelids and the fingers over your forehead, it's very important that you verify how is your breathing. Because if you're constraining your breathing, well, that's not going to be any relaxing at all. And it's not going to bring oxygen to your uh, brain. So that's not going to help you either. So make sure that you can breathe deeply as you are doing the palming. And with your eyes closed, make sure that the space with your um, covered eyes with your palms is as dark as possible. Now, as we're doing the palming, why does palming work? And so you can keep doing palming while I'm explaining this. So on the one hand, there's heat in your hands. Yeah, there's energy in your hands. Um, but just the heat in your hands helps relax the muscles around the eyes and in the eyes. Yeah, so this is one of the properties of palming that um, help you see better afterwards the more your eyes are relaxed and the better you see. We'll do another little exercise later that will uh, prove this. Um, the more your uh, muscles in your eyes are relaxed, the more they can move and the more they can uh, um, create the proper focusing that you need for the distance of objects. Yeah? So you want your muscles in your eyes to be relaxed so that you can focus properly at different distances. This is uh, reason number one by the palming, why the palming works. And the other reason why palming is so good for your eyesight is that it creates darkness. And when your eyes are not exposed to any kind of light, and that's why you want to make this space as dark as possible, then your nervous system can rest. The retina in the eyes has photosensitive cells. And these photosensitive cells are activated, especially the rods, 
when there's any source of light. And guess what? At night, in our homes, we don't have darkness any, anymore. Cities have artificial light. And sometimes in our rooms, even if we have blinds, well, there's some kind of pilot of the alarm clock or the iPhone or the television. And so even at night in our rooms, we may have sources of light which keep our nervous system from resting fully and which keep our retinas, our eyes, from resting fully. So every time that we can create a moment of darkness as complete as possible, it's resting for the ruts and the cones in a retina, it's resting for the eyes. And because the eyes are so deeply connected with the brain and so the nervous system, it helps us rest our nervous system. The more relaxed we are, the better we see. So we can even help the darkness that we are having with our eyes covered, with our closed eyelids, by imagining black objects. For example, we can imagine a black cat. The neighbor's cat is called Molly, my neighbor's cat, and she's very black and she's pretty, so I can imagine a black cat or a black panther or a black horse or a black velvet dress or the black hat of a magician or the cape of the magician or a black curtain. Or we could simply imagine that there's black ink that's pouring on our closed eyelids and then the experience of black is darker and darker. If you are being able to imagine black, congratulations, this is helpful for your eyesight. And the better you are able to imagine black objects, the better you will be able to see with your open eyes. If, as we're doing palming, you're having trouble to perceive black, if you're seeing other colors or you feel some flashes or you feel some kinds of lights, well, then you will want to be practicing palming more often because it will help you to get into this black experience and the black experience with closed eyes is correlated with seeing clearly with open eyes. And maybe as we are doing the palming, you can also pay attention at your eyes. You can pay attention at the quality of the sensations in your eyes. Could your eyes feel more relaxed? How would your eyes feel if they felt more relaxed? And imagine your eyes relaxing more now. And feel them relaxing. Feel the weight of your eyeballs with gravity and notice how they relax more and more. And also notice the heat that comes from your hands and how cozy it is and how your eyes can relax even more. And now feel not only your hands and your eyes relaxed, but feel the skin of your face that's relaxing and your skull. And feel your neck and imagine that your neck is relaxing too. Imagine your neck becoming more like butter, more flexible softer and your shoulders too. Notice your arms becoming more and more relaxed and also your shoulders and your back. Feel the area of your chest relaxing more 
as you notice that you breathe more calmly and more relaxed. And feel your belly, your abdomen also relaxing. If there's any tension in any of these areas, imagine that dissipating as you relax more and more. And now go to your lower back and your butt. Imagine all those organs in that part of your body relaxing more and more. Your lower belly. Feel your buttocks relaxing more and your thighs and your knees and your calves and your feet. Now all your body is more relaxed. And you can notice how your eyes feel more relaxed in a more relaxed body. When you're doing palming, you can take the time you want. You can take one or two minutes, or you can take a longer time. And as you imagine, your eyes relaxing, you can also invite the rest of your body to relax. Imagine it and feel it. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to uh, close the exercise in a few moments, but at home, in your time, you could do the palming as long as it feels nice, as long as it feels comfortable. You can do palming as a moment of rest at your desk, or if for some reason you cannot do it directly at the desk because you're in a public space, well, you could take the occasion of going to the toilet to do some palming in a very discreet, private space. You can also do palming just before going to bed. And in this way, you relax your eyes just before sleeping, and then all the hours that you sleep will benefit from the relaxation that you will have given to your eyes just before going to sleep. And you can also do palming any time you feel like it during the day. Even if you practice for a minute or two, you will notice the difference. And the good news is that the results from palming accumulate over time. So the more you practice palming, the more regularly and frequently, even if it happens for short moments, the better you will see. Okay, now we're going to see how we can undo the position of palming. So while keeping your eyes closed and your hands over your closed eyes, you're going to make your position more straight if you were having your uh, elbows on the table or on your knees. Take a, a straight position. And while keeping the breathing going and keeping the eyes closed, you're going to gently, slowly remove your hands from your closed eyelids, millimeter after millimeter, observing the colors that you see on your closed eyelids. You could start perceiving red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. You could see any color as you are removing your hands progressively from your closed eyelids. Observe the colors that you see on your closed eyelids. They could, be, they could be different from one time to another. They could be changing as you're removing your hands from your face. The colors that you see depending on what has happened just before the palming and your state. And it's okay if you see different colors. And when the color that you see in your closed eyelids doesn't change anymore, then you can remove the hands, you can make them rest on your lap, for example. And you keep your eyes closed for the moment because we're going to do a special opening 
after the palming. We're, doing, we're going to do the opposite of blinking. We're going to take a snapshot. That is, we're going to open our eyes one moment and close them immediately. And we will remember what we saw. And when we don't remember it anymore, we will imagine what we saw. So we can take a snapshot, open the eyes a moment, close them again, and remember what you saw as long as possible. And when you don't remember anymore what you saw, then imagine what you saw. And then you can turn around with your eyes closed, look somewhere else, open for a moment, take a snapshot, close them again, remember what you saw. And when you cannot remember it anymore, then imagine what you saw. Memory and imagination and ver are very linked to eyesight. So when we are training our memory and our imagination, we are helping ourselves see clear as well. Turn around in some other direction, take a snapshot, and close the eyes again, and remember what you saw with as much detail as possible. And when you cannot remember anymore, imagine what you saw. You can do this snapshot after palming three to five times, something like that. And after that, we can do butterfly blinking. So you can imagine that your eyelids are like the wings of a butterfly. And uh, the butterfly is flying, the butterfly is moving. So you're blinking very lightly, very fast, so that you get your eyes used to light again. And now you can take a look around and see what has changed. Every time that we are doing um, palming with our hands, we are creating the darkness that we could create with a dark room and a mask, etc. Uh, we are creating warmth that we could maybe um, uh, also create with a warm towel, but there's an extra ingredient that a mask or a towel wouldn't have, and that's the energy that we have in our hands. Um, so again, maybe for some of you, the concept of healing energy in the palms of your hands is familiar. Maybe for some of you, it's the first time you're hearing about it. Uh, in any case, um, my, um, my invitation today is uh, to work with this concept and to experiment with it and so that you can add some more tools to your toolkit to improve your eyesight and vision. Yeah? This way we can tweak again the way we do palming and add this other dimension or optimize this other dimension to accelerate and uh, enhance and improve the effects of palming so that it works even better uh, for you to improve your eyesight. <clears throat> so. Would you like for us to explore the world of uh, healing energy in our hands and how it can help us to improve our vision further and faster and deeper? Okay, great. So it looks like uh, you're in. So we can start with it. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is a very simple exercise. And um, since we have this healing energy in our, in our hands, we're going to activate it or optimize it or be, become increasingly aware of it, yeah? So I'm going to guide you through a, a very simple exercise that will take a few minutes so that if you haven't been aware of the energy in your hands up to now, that it's, it becomes something very tangible, very easy to identify and then very easy to use for the purposes that we want to use them, that we want to use it, improving your eyesight, uh -huh, improving the condition of your eyes and your eyesight and vision. So for this practice, I'm going to invite you to take a very comfortable position, ideally with uh, sitting, with your feet with or without shoes, that doesn't matter, whatever is more comfortable for you, with your feet flat on the floor. Um, you're going to have your hands facing up on your lap, on your thighs, and um, ideally, um, if you have a chair where you can rest your, um, your back or that you can stay straight but without any kind of uh, effort or tension, that'd be the best. Um, you're going to have your eyes mostly closed. So if you were uh, wearing any kind of, um, of glasses, I would invite you to remove them, even the, pin even the pinhole glasses 
Also, because um, it would be interesting to notice, for example, Peggy, I would invite you to remove the glasses. <clears throat> and also because it's going to be interesting to see um, before the exercise and after the exercise, even though it's something very simple, if something changes in the way you see. So I would like to invite you to take a moment to take points of reference around you and have a look at how you see at this moment. How is your perception of light? How is your perception of colors? Your perception of depth, textures? Mm -hmm. If you have uh, the eye charts of the small print that are at hand, that you can see them without moving from where you are, you can have a glance to see how well and how far you see in the smaller and smaller letters. And any other thing you want to notice, how wide is your vision field, um, how you see movement, perspective, if there's elements that allow you to look at it, to notice it. Anyway, take a fresh look at how you're seeing at this moment and you will be able to compare, after we finish the exercise, how you see after the exercise, if something has changed. Yeah? Okay, so um, now that you have taken some points of reference, um, you can close your eyes. Close your eyes. Uh, Grete, Lind, the idea is to have your hands on, the, on your lap. If you put them on your eyes, then you won't be able to do the, the exercise. Okay, so I'm waiting for everyone to take a comfortable position. Hands on your lap, palms facing up, and your eyes closed. And there's a slight music coming from my end that you can listen to and let it sink in and help you relax. And now you're going to pay attention at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands and the sensations that you are aware at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands. And as you pay attention at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands, you become more aware of the air that's caressing the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands. And as you become more and more aware, you sense the temperature of the air. And the density of the air. And the movement of the air that's caressing the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands. And as you're paying more and more attention and you're becoming more and more aware of the sensations that you feel at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands, you start noticing a different sensation. You start noticing a sensation that is not as your usual sensations. Maybe that sensation is a sensation of um, tingling, or maybe you feel heat or cold or movement, something, some sensation in the, palm, in the surface of the skin of the palms of your hand that's different from your usual sensations.
And as you pay more and more attention at this sensation, it becomes more and more tangible, more and more noticeable. Could you imagine that the increasing sensation that you feel at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands is the membrane of the skin, of your skin, that is vibrating as energy goes through it? Imagine that what you feel in your hands is the membrane of the skin, of your skin, that is vibrating as the energy goes through it. And as you imagine it, you can feel more and more your hands vibrating with energy, radiating energy. Feel your hands radiating with energy that you can feel more and more as you pay attention at the sensations at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hand. And the more you pay attention at it, the more it becomes intense and tangible. And now, as you keep paying attention <coughs> to the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands and the sensation that you feel in your hands and keeping your eyes closed, you're going to raise your hands to the height of your chest and you're going to put one hand in front of the other as if you were holding a ball between your hands. And uh, as you keep paying attention at the sensation that you feel at the palms of your hands, you're going to imagine that you're making this ball as if you were making a snowball bigger by adding more energy to it, as if you were adding more snow to the snowball that you want to make bigger. So add more energy to the ball to make it bigger, more tangible, more noticeable. And as you're moving your hands to add more energy to the ball, you're feeling the contours, you're feeling the volume, you're feeling the density of this ball that becomes more and more tangible. You can do this with your eyes closed. And now, you're going to hold this ball between your hands and while paying attention at what you feel at your hands and while not letting your hands touch each other, you're going to take your hands closer to each other and you're going to feel what you feel as you're making your hands become closer to each other. And then you're going to separate your hands progressively and you're going to feel what you feel as you're separating your hands. And you will get them closer together again and notice what you feel as you're getting your hands closer to each other. And you're going to separate them again do this several times, getting your hands closer and further away and noticing what you feel in the palms of your hands as you are doing this. And ask yourself if the sensation that you feel in your hands is the same or different. And now, as you keep feeling the sensations in your hands, and the ball between your hands, you're going to open your eyes and you're going to have another fresh look around you to see if you see the same or different than before. How do you perceive light? How do you perceive colors? How do you perceive textures or movement or perspective or void or any other thing that you were paying attention at? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also going to invite you. So you saw that this exercise that we did was extremely simple. You could repeat it. And if you can do it with someone at home, we're not together in the same space, so we cannot do it together between us. If we were in a live workshop in person, we could. 
then what you can try, what you can test and experiment with someone at home, after you guide them through this first part, is that one person stands with their hands separate, like me, and the other one will move the hands around one hand, around the other, in between the hands, around the hands, and you both, without touching each other, you both can notice what you feel in your hands. And then the person that was moving will be stay still, and the other one will move the hands around one hand, around the other, in between, around both hands, and you can both feel what you feel in your hands as you're doing this and not touching each other. This is something that you can experiment in the coming days and we'd be very happy to see what you noticed. But for the time being, did you experience the same when you were getting your hands closed and where you were separating them or something different? If you experience the same, you can put one finger up. If you experience something different, you can put two fingers up. <clears throat> Okay, I'm seeing mostly two fingers. Okay, so most people notice something different uh, when you were <clears throat> getting your hands closer or separating them. For me, what you felt when you were pushing your, when you were getting your hands closer was the energy between your hands that you were compressing, that was dense. Mm -hmm. And when you were separating the hands, well, there was more space, so you didn't feel the energy as much. That would be my interpretation. But I'm very interested to hear what were the sensations that you had in your hands. <clears throat> you can type it in the chat. <clears throat> what type of sensations did you feel in your hands? Okay, Gretje from the Netherlands says, warm, okay, warmer with hands closed, additional heat and pulsing, Warm, tingling, okay, tingling, mm -hmm. more tingling, the weight of the air, tingling, mm -hmm. energy coming out the middle of the palm, warm and tingling, warm, okay. So the kind of words that you are writing, <coughs> warm, tingling, spiral, spiral, energy, tingling, pulling when hands separating, stronger energy when the hands are near to each other, Colder hands with closer, okay, connection between the hands. Warm when, when closer, warm pulsation, okay, energy. Oh, and Jennifer has been an energy practitioner since 2004, so this is a piece of cake for you. Um, okay, burning in Lao Gong and tingling in the hands. Okay, so the sensations that you are expressing, warmth, tingling, density, connections between the hands, for me, all these terms that you are using, even when you're mentioning cold, for me, all these terms that you are using are terms that express different facets of energy, different aspects of energy. It's as if we, were, we had a light bulb on and we could ask someone what's coming out of the light bulb. And someone may say light, and it's true. Somebody else may say heat, and it's true also. Somebody else may say there's an electromagnetic field there, and it's also true. It's just different aspects of the same phenomenon called energy. And for me, what you have been expressing that you felt in your hands are the different aspects of the phenomenon that most caught your attention at this time. But every time that you feel these sensations in your hands, tingling, warmth, uh, ants, like a pool of energy or a spiral. Every time you feel any of these sensations, for me, you have activated your energy in your hands and you're aware of it, yeah? And when we activate the energy in our hands, it has an advantage, and that is that we can use it with more intention, more awareness and more effectiveness um, for whatever purpose we want. And of course, in this course, within this course, our main or objective is to see clearly, to uh, have better eyesight, better vision. So that's how we're going to use it in this context. Another question that I have, um, and it can be a quick answer, is if with this uh, very short practice that we did, um, something has changed in the way you feel, your relaxation, and even the way you saw. 
and we were just activating the energy in your hands. But um, um, even with this very simple small step, it may have brought a change. I know that for a lot of people, when they activate the energy in their hands, their perception of light and colors often becomes better. And I would like to know what, what, how it has been for this group, how it has been for you, because you're my main concern <laughs> at this moment. Uh -huh. So uh, if you want to type um, what has happened, or you, want, you may want to share or you may want to write it on your notebook, either is fine, but I would like to bring some awareness at the process, on the process. So Catherine, yes, perception of light and color has improved. Very relaxing, seeing letters better in a distance. Okay, um, okay, so there's some, uh, um, some improvements that are mentioned. Okay, the characters look clear, extra two rows. Congratulations, Elena, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Just with a couple minutes of activating the energy, you see two more rows. Great, so that may be a tool that you may want to use more because uh, it's clearly having a good impact on you. Okay. So, um, experience a flash of clear vision after the activation. Great, Diana. So, uh, another, another sign that it may be a very useful tool for you to, to practice and to dive deeper. Okay, Michael, more energy. Okay, so now we have just activated the energy in our hands and we can incorporate this energy into the practice of palming. You've been palming now for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And maybe you did uh, palming rubbing your hands, and maybe you did it uh, on, a, on a table, maybe you did it in the thinker's position with your uh, elbows on your knees, maybe you did the palming laying in bed uh, with a cushion or something. You've probably have been experiencing and practicing palming uh, with slightly different uh, tweaks to it uh, in terms of what position you were using for palming. And now, I would like, um, so Kathleen, you don't feel the tingling anymore. Yes, because now we're paying attention at something else, but we can get it back. And the more you pay attention to it, the more you will be familiar with it until you are able to feel it all the time, if you want to, if you choose to, okay? It requires practice, just like everything else in life. Um, and so I was saying, you can add this energy that we have activated into our practice of palming. And I'm going to invite you to do so now. We're going to do actually two types of palming, the standard palming and the palming with energy. And um, we're going to take one minute for each. It's just for, for the purpose of seeing the difference. Yeah, uh, of course, um, because we all, I also want to teach you more things during this, um, <coughs> this class. Um, but you can, of course, make it longer when you're going to do the palming, yeah? So um, we're going to start with just a very standard, normal palming. And um, let me put the uh, timer, one minute. So when we do the standard palming, if you want, you can rub your hands. You make the shape of a cup. You cross uh, your fingers and uh, you put your... Um, hands, your palms on your eyes and the fingers on the forehead. <clears throat> you can put your elbows on the table um, and we go for a minute. And as we're doing the palming, of course, you want to imagine the black that you see as dark as possible. And you can imagine ink, dark, Chinese black ink that's pouring in front of your closed eyelids to imagine black even darker and darker. Or you can imagine any object that's black. For example, a black panther or a black horse or a black velvet dress or black curtains or the black cape of a magician or the black hat, or the ball number eight of pool, the ball number eight, the part that's black, or any other thing that makes you easier, that makes it easier for you to imagine dark black. And now the minute's gone, so you're going to keep the eyes closed, 
you can straighten your position and with your eyes closed you're going to remove your hands from your eyes closed from your face noticing the different colors that you notice as you remove your hands and when the color doesn't change anymore you can let go the hands and then you can blink to get used again to light and see how you see. And of course, after this minute of palming, there could be a difference also in how you see. Maybe you perceive more uh, light and more colors, and maybe you see the empty space better, or the 3D of objects, or uh, textures, or you see better in the, ch in the eye chart. Of course, there could be an improvement directly, there usually is. From palming. It has been a short one, so maybe it's more noticeable when you do a longer palming, but there could be an improvement. And now we're going to practice the palming with energy so that you can compare them both um, in a short frame of time so that you can feel the difference that it makes for you. And then you can choose the kind of palming that you like the best uh, for the different moments of the day or different moments in life where they're more appropriate. Yeah? Okay, so now to do the palming with energy, you're going to be seated uh, with your palms on your lap, with your hands on your lap, palms facing up, feet on the floor, um, your back relaxed, on the back of your chair, your eyes closed. And you're going to pay attention at the surface of the skin of the palms of your hands again and you're going to pay attention at the sensations that you feel at the surface of the palms of your hands and the more you pay attention to those sensations the more they become noticeable and tangible maybe you feel warmth maybe you feel cold maybe you feel tingling maybe you feel energy or a spiral or movement whatever you feel at the surface of the palms of your hands and the more you pay attention to it the clearer intense and more tangible it becomes and it's much easier than the first time because now it's the second time you're practicing so it becomes noticeable and tangible and more intense faster and faster. Now you can imagine that what you feel in your hands is the energy that's flowing through the membrane of the skin of your hands and as you imagine this is happening it's easier and easier to feel it until you feel your hands radiating with energy. And now that you have this energy that you feel in your hands, that you feel your hands radiating with energy, you're going to make that ball of energy again. You raise your hands and you imagine that you're making a ball of energy by adding more energy to the ball, moving your hands as if you were making a ball of snow. And the more energy you add to the ball, the bigger it becomes, the more tangible it becomes and it's easier and easier to feel the energy. And now you can hold the hand between your hands and get your hands closer without them touching each other and feel how you compress the energy, how it's more dense and more warm, how your hands are connected. And then when you separate your hands, you feel how the sensation is different. You, you can do this several times until you make this ball of energy very real, very tangible, very noticeable to you. And now you're going to take this ball of energy and by taking the palming position, you're going to pour this energy into your eyes. And now you're going to... So, have you the palms of your hands covering your eyes, the fingers covering the forehead, you can take a comfortable position, the same as before. As you feel how your eyes are letting in the energy 
that came from your hands and that is still coming now. And maybe as this is happening, the color that you perceive with your eyes closed may be the same as before or may be different. Observe what color you feel as you're pouring healing energy into your eyes. And you can imagine that your eyes are opening and receiving this energy and the energy is visiting and going through all the layers and all the structures in your eyes that are engaged in the process of healing. The energy is filling your eyelids and eyelashes and the energy is filling your cornea and conjunctive tissue and the sclera of your eyes and the energy is also filling the aqueous humor and the iris and the pupil and the crystalline the natural lens that we have in our eyes and more and more energy is coming from your hands into your eyes and the energy is going to your vitreous humor and the energy is also reaching your retina the different parts of your retina, the peripheral retina, the macula, the fovea, and more and more energy is pouring in, and the energy is reaching the optic nerve. And you can feel how the energy goes through the optic nerve into the brain, into different layers of the brain. The reptilian brain, the limbic brain, the neocortex, both hemispheres of the visual cortex we know that our optic nerve is connected to 85 percent of our brain and we're sending more and more healing energy to all those parts and we also send healing energy to our skull <coughs> and and now the minute is over so we're going to stop here you're going to uh, take a straight position if you had changed it and with your eyes closed. You're going to let your hand separate from your head little by little and you observe what colors you see in your closed eyelids. As you separate your hands from your closed eyes and when the color doesn't change anymore you let go of your hands and now you can do a series of blinking so that your eyes get used to light again very softly and after you can have a look at how you see after the second minute of energy palming and you can see what has changed how you perceive colors how you perceive light textures the three dimensions or the empty space or perspectives, contrasts, movements, your visual field, how wide it is. Mm -hmm. And um, besides noticing what has improved, you can also make a um, note for yourself comparing both types of palming. Did they feel the same or different? Mm -hmm. How was your general relaxation? Were you more relaxed in one or in the other? How were your eyes relaxed? Were they more relaxed in one or in the other? Did you perceive the same color as you put your hands on your eyes? Or did you perceive something different? And what was the effect afterwards on your general relaxation, your eyes relaxation, but also your perception, the different dimensions of seeing? Okay, Carol says, I feel a big difference, more powerful with energy and palming. It felt very different. Hugi, everything is more defined. Uh, Nancy, eyes more moist with energy palming. Gretje, uh, the black was more black. Uh, Serena, I had a flash of white. Diana, I perceived a bright color this time. Okay, Monica, very emotional, deep pink color. Okay, Reina, the color while palming was amazing. 
Catherine, I see much better. I did not want to stop. You will be able to practice this as long as you want. Now we are in the, in the context of a class, so I, need, I want to teach more things. But of course, you can do these palmings as long as you want. Elena, palming with energy, more relaxing. See more black while palming with energy. Okay, art letters are a little clearer after the energy palming. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of you had a, an even better experience with the palming with energy. And of course, this may be different for different people and you get to choose whatever you prefer to do whenever you prefer to do it. But we're opening options, yeah? We're uh, um, enlarging the possibilities and uh, having more tools in our toolkit to improve our eyesight and uh, and vision. Mm -hmm.